there is indeed a drop-off near the Congo border, and it's one of the most improbable underwater aquatic landscapes in the world. This giraffe catfish is an unusual sight, but it is of no threat to the cichlids, because it's vegetarian. The so-called drop-off turned out to take a form even more unusual than a real drop-off. It's a huge sand dune with a very accentuated inclination, with streams of rocks waving their way towards the deep. It's difficult to find an explanation how such a formation came about, or how the sand does not flow towards the bottom of the lake. The inclination of the sand dune seems to defy physics. Like almost all of Lake Tanganyika, this is an area open to fishing, and it's right in front of a village. And still, the amount of fish life here is outstanding. It's difficult to imagine how this area would be if it was part of a protected area. The association between Neolamprologus pulcher and Neolamprologus caudopunctactus, two species that are commonly seen living as colonies, can also be seen here in great numbers. The main difference is that these groups don't include juveniles. On the other hand, although most of the fish are adults, there's no visible breeding activity either. Unlike other areas where these two species live at rock level, they don't seem to be able to hold permanent territories among the rocks. That privilege belongs to smaller but more aggressive species that keep all the others above the rock level. All these fish feed on passing plankton, the base of food chain in Lake Tanganyika. It's difficult to escape the comparison with marine habitats, since these groups of Neolamprologus pulcher with their liar tails look very similar to the large groups of antias that inhabit the reefs. In many fish species, the ratio of males and females is influenced by the temperature, and the global warming is affecting Lake Tanganyika in a stronger way than the marine environments. These changes in the ratio of males and females have the potential to lead many species to extinction, and the lake's temperature is expected to rise at least C degrees Celsius till the end of the century. This is already affecting the zooplankton in the lake, because the warm water on the surface prevents cooler and nutrient-rich water from ascending. On the other hand, the reason these fish are the object of so many scientific studies regarding evolution is that they are among the fastest evolving vertebrates in the world. It's possible that they will find a way to adapt quickly enough to the changes they will be facing. This film is a portrait of the lake at a specific time. No matter what comes, the lake is so dynamic that most of what is said and shown here will no longer be true as years go by. One thing is assured, as changes come, man related or not, they will affect this complex balance between the over 200 endemic fish species. Some of them will disappear, while others will thrive, filling the gaps left by the extinct species. Many others will go through changes so dramatic that they will hardly be recognizable. Whatever comes, this will always be an interesting place. As to what species will prevail, all bets are off.